Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and I've set about answering some of the beginner's questions that pop up in Wargaming. And this is entirely self-serving, because the more people play games, the more opponents I get to play against. In this video, I'll look at a question that pops up fairly commonly for Bolt Action, and to do with how basing artillery units and weapons teams works, what's acceptable and what is the best way to do it. The short version is there is no best way, and that any way of basing is just fine and doesn't affect the rules. So long as whatever you're doing is even remotely sensible, just do what you think is the most practical or looks the coolest. But that would make this video 10 seconds long, and so let's look into a little more depth. Normal infantry in the game are one model with their own individual weapon, a rifle or submachine gun, whatever. Easy enough, one model, one weapon on a single base. But weapons teams have a single larger weapon, and each of the figure models acts as crew for it. Over the course of a game, you might want to move the team, maybe they need a tow vehicle, and they might take incoming fire and lose a few of the crew as casualties. And there are other considerations like the exact placement of models that you might want to consider when you play your games, and that affects how you base them. And the short version, again, is pretty simple. Base them how you like, it's sort of all fine. The rules for bolt action aren't so strict, or require any strictness to require any specific way of basing. So there are three main types of weapons teams. There are the light weapons teams in squads, there are support teams, and then artillery. And these distinctions don't really matter when it comes to basing but they do work ever so slightly differently, so you might want to consider basing different types of teams in your platoon in different ways, depending on what that is. So firstly, the smallest type is the squad-based team. These are most commonly a light machine gunner with a single assistant inside a larger rifle squad. However, there are other weapons that some nations have access to and might have more than two models. Because these are embedded in a larger infantry squad, most players will tend to keep these models based separately. And you can see this is how all of mine are done, because I'm boring. And whilst a lot of players use prone models to make them easier to spot, you can see I use the standing models, and I just look for the specific weapon when I need to. It is not that uncommon, however, for players to base the weapons team together, carrying their weapon from position to position on a single pill base, or prone together on a larger base in a firing position, and that helps to keep the ammunition feeds lined up on machine guns. And this works totally fine. You might just need a marker if the loader or gunner is taken as a casualty, but most of the time it's a critical hit removing the gunner and you just replace them with a rifle model representing the loader continuing the fight. The second type of weapons team is the support team. And this includes mortars, machine guns, snipers and other weapons that are set up separately from infantry squads. These teams are still quite small, many players do still base them individually. However, because they are a separate unit, many players like to base them together. You can see here my Soviet weapons teams of two are all separate, where my British teams are multi-based. Having used both methods, I can say without a doubt that it doesn't matter, both work just fine. Some of my larger teams here are put on bases with removable assistance. My Soviet mortar team has their gunner glued in place and the two assistants removable. My German Goliath mine has all three of their crew removable, and this is because the mine is a single-use weapon and the crew remain as effectively a tiny little rifle squad after it is used. And I can also use my Kettenkrad to tow it. One oddity here is my heavy machine gun and ampulomets. They only have space for one additional crew and the gunner on each of these bases, but they require a crew of three and four respectively. The others just kind of tag along on separate bases. The largest and final type of weapons team here is artillery, and this is of course the point that we were getting to. And once we get to this size, the gun itself really does act as another model in the team on top of the crew. And as these are such large pieces, they do look really cool, and many players like to glue all the crew down to the same base as the gun and have fun making a little diorama. And this is what I did with my British 17-pounder. But for my Soviet Ziz 3, I made a larger base with the same type of removable crew as my smaller teams. 
and this time I even have the correct number of spaces. But again there are other options, and you can leave the gun unbased or on its own small base and have the crew individually based. And one advantage of not basing the gun at all makes it easier to place the gun in tight spaces in between terrain or inside terrain if you set up there. I said at the top of the video that you can base any of these models how you wish, but there are some ever so slight restrictions and rules and that sort of thing that make everything very strict and you have to do it properly. Well, not really, but let's talk through the rules and make sure you feel comfortable basing your models how you find best. If you wish to base the model separately, especially those weapons teams in squads, but all the way up to artillery as well, then simply follow the same unit coherency that you've already been using for your smaller rifle squads. That being, every model stays within one each of another model to form a chain or similar with every other model in the team. For artillery, you additionally must have every crew member within two inches of the breech of the gun. And that usually just happens naturally when you bundle them up behind the gun. Those same distances apply if you want to multi-base, of course, although you will notice that the commander for my Ziz 3, whilst they stand within two inch of the gun's breech, does not stand within one inch of another crew model. But it's never been an issue, and if I ever need to position it correctly, I can just stand the model to the side. Some of the bigger questions that new players raise about multi-basing is how blast markers work and how ranges are measured. Range measurements are the easiest one, as in the rulebook it says that all measurements are taken from the breach of the gun and not the crew, so the exact placement of the crew doesn't really matter, hence my Ziz 3 not causing any issue. Blast markers additionally aren't really too much of an issue here because every model has to be within 2 inch of the gun's breach, most of the time you're all bundled together. Now if you try to take full advantage of the permitted spacing, you can reduce the number of hits caused by the smaller blast markers, but a 1 inch template will always hit two models, but if they're bundled up you can just about squeeze in a third. Similarly with a 2 inch template, you can get seven hits on absurdly bundled models, which never really happens, and if you string them out, then you might only get two. A three inch blast marker will always hit at least three crew, no matter how they're spaced, and will probably hit more. However, once you get to the four inch template, because all of your models have to be within two inch of the gun's breach, mathematically, geometrically, you are hitting all of the crew models every time with the four inch template. Now, if you are some kind of crazy power gamer that cares about this kind of thing, you can probably imagine some situation where this might matter. But in normal games, in every time I've ever used an artillery piece, even a couple of casualties and the pins you get from HE hits does put the gun out of action for at least a few turns, if not the rest of the game. The last big point, which is totally irrelevant but is still asked when it comes to multi-basing is where counts as each crew model. Again, there is a small rule hidden away in the rulebook that clarifies this. Each model should be considered to have a 25mm area around them as if they were standing on a separate 25mm round base. This is seemingly a very handy rule that sorts out a lot of issues, but I have never used this rule. I have never seen it being used, and I've never even discussed it with my bolt action group. And this is because these issues never come about. It's never been a problem that needed fixing, but it's nice that it's there if the one in a million chance and you actually do need to know exactly where your crew models are. Another big question that new players ask is how to keep track of how many crew are left if you've glued them all down to the same base. And I'll use my 17 pounder as an example. This starts with a crew of five and the five crew figures are all glued to it. When some Germans pop out and shoot at them, they might take a pin and two casualties. The remaining three crew return fire past their leadership test and they do quite successfully put the Germans out of action. Now as you see, this D6 that I put on the model's base easily keeps track of the remaining crew and it doesn't get mixed up with the rest of the dice since you sh really shouldn't be rolling dice on your models anyway. As a side note, I use these little flag dice holders and they hold the order die, a d6 for the pins and a third place to keep track of those remaining casualties for multi-based units. Now it has been mentioned that it's nice to keep your models consistent. 
In rules terms, this isn't necessary, as I have played many, many games with models based in different ways in the same list at the same time. But if you're quickly looking about the table, it can be much easier for you to pick out which units are in better or worse condition if you base them in the same way, so that's something for you to consider. Do you want to base your mortar, your sniper, your anti-tank gun in the same way for the practical consistency for your whole platoon, or differently for the practicality of each individual unit? As usual, I'm not famous enough to have a long list of things at the end of the video, but in this case I want to thank a few users on Reddit who weighed in on the conversation and to make sure I didn't miss anything important. Feel free also to weigh in in the comments below. In the case that I have missed something, please let me know, but do share the video out to newer players who are asking this question, as clarifying this will just help them out and get them into the games with just a lot less stress. But for now, I will say that I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.